The log operator, the natural log operator really, is often combined with differentiation in a way that can be very powerful, that allows you to compute some really difficult derivatives. Here's an example of how you can use the log operator to differentiate a function with an interesting exponent. What is the derivative of x to the x? Here's a hint. If you say x times x to the x minus 1, uh-uh, <laughs> nobody, you're out of here. Don't do that. you got to be a little bit more careful. Let's begin by writing out an equation, setting x to the x equal to y. And then what we're going to do to manage that function in the exponent, we're going to apply the log operator to simplify. So take the log of both sides. On the left, we have log of y. On the right, using logarithm laws, we have x times log of x. Now we're at a place where we can differentiate that function on the right-hand side. So let's apply the implicit differentiation operator to this equation. On the left, the derivative of log of y is dy over y. On the right, via the product rule, the derivative of x times log of x is dx times log of x plus x times the derivative of log x, that's dx over x. Now we can factor out that dx, and what's left over is quantity 1 plus log of x. Now we can take this equation, manipulate the differentials, and solve for the derivative, getting dy dx equals y times 1 plus log of x. Now that's not quite perfect because it's got that y in there, but we can fix that by substituting an x to the x, and we get that the derivative of x to the x is really x to the x times quantity 1 plus log of x. And this actually makes kind of a lot of sense, right? Let's think about it. What's the derivative of e to the x? That's uh, e to the x. The derivative of x to the x really can't be x to the x. It's got to be something bigger because if we think about what happens asymptotically, x to the x has to be bigger than e to the x as x is getting large. So how much bigger than x to the x is the derivative of x to the x? Well, you've got that log of x term in there. That's kind of cool. What happens to this function in the other asymptotic limit as x is getting closer to zero? Well, that's interesting because at some point, the derivative goes negative, right? That log of x gets negative. I wonder, are there any critical points? Are there any places where the derivative vanishes? Oh yeah, that's happening when, let's see, x equals 1 over e. It looks like there's a critical point there. I would guess that that is a minimum for this function. But you're really going to have to use the derivative because trying to get a graphing calculator to do this, mm, that's a bit difficult. Here's a different example that is similar, but a little bit simpler. What's the derivative of a to the x, where a is a constant? Now, this is something that you've probably seen before. You may have memorized this. You may know that the derivative of a to the x is a to the x times log of a, which makes sense if you think of it. What happens when a equals e? Uh-huh, that works out. Okay. Now, why is this true? Let's apply the same technique and see where that log of a comes from. If I take a to the x, set it equal to y, apply the log operator to simplify this, what do I get? I get that log of y is x times log of a. Aha! Now when we differentiate that implicitly, we get that dy over y is dx times log of a. No product rule involved. Solving for the derivative gives us what? dy dx is y times log of a. And that, of course, is the answer that we know and love. But that's where that log of a comes from. It comes from the application of this log operator. Logarithmic differentiation is great, but it works for more than just functions with really complicated exponents. Consider the following example where we're trying to compute the derivative of a function f of x, or really, we're going to call it fn of x, and that is equal to 1 over x minus 2 
times 1 over x minus 3 times 1 over x minus 5 times 1 over x minus 7. We keep going with this until at the end we have 1 over x minus p sub n, where that means the nth prime integer. Okay, now this would be really complicated to compute if we multiplied everything out. I think you could compute the derivative of this using the product rule, some induction. You would have to kind of look for the pattern of things. Might get a little complicated. So let's use logarithmic differentiation. I'm going to take this function, f sub n of x, and I'm going to rewrite it using product notation. Taking the product as k goes from 1 to n of quantity x minus p sub k to the negative 1 power. And now we're going to use logarithmic differentiation. Applying the log to both sides of this is really going to be helpful. On the left, we have log of fn. On the right, what do we have? Here's the thing. The log converts that product into a sum. Recall your logarithm laws. So on the right, we have the sum k goes from 1 to n of log of x minus p sub k to the negative 1. But I can pull that negative 1 exponent out in front again by logarithm laws. Now what we can do is differentiate this entire equation with respect to x, doing the same sorts of manipulations that we have done in the past two examples. We get in the end that the derivative of this function f sub n with respect to x is minus f sub n times the sum k goes from 1 to infinity of the derivative of log of x minus p sub k. That is quantity x minus p sub k to the negative 1. Now again, what's cool about this is that this is a big, complicated function that is easily differentiated using a little bit of action with the log operator in advance. Logarithmic differentiation is useful for all kinds of really scary looking functions. Now, let me mention that in general, and with this example in particular, you really ought to be a little bit more careful when using logs about their domain, about absolute values, things like that. We're not going to worry about that here, but you should know that that can sometimes be an issue.